Hopping on the path of progress, folks. Today we're going to talk about investing in gentrifying neighborhoods. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks, the show where I help folks like you, everyday people, become real estate investors. Today, I'm working with my man, Chris. Chris, you are an investor from California. You're looking to invest in the Cleveland, Ohio real estate market in multifamily real estate. And I happen to have a property for you today I think is going to be amazing. Uh, as far as the building itself, pretty normal investment lot like a lot of the other buildings but it's the location brother the location that i really want to do a deep dive on more after this hey steve what are you doing oh nothing just saving money on my rental property insurance oh my steve take me now holton wise real estate investing made easy Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Let's jump into this property. More importantly, though, than the property is the location of the property, folks. Now, a lot of you are coming to Cleveland to invest in rental property real estate because we have the cash flow numbers that you don't see where you live, right? California, New York, right? You can't get cheap properties with high price to rent ratios that we have here in Cleveland. But not all neighborhoods in Cleveland uh, are created equally, right? There's a lot of variance as far as levels of risk, okay? There's levels to this thing, right? Stephen A. Smith's always saying that uh, about the basketball. The basketball, y'all. There's levels to this investing. There's levels to the deepness of your analytics and what you're trying to do, right? So I created the Ultimate Guide to Grading Cleveland Neighborhoods. Of course, you know I linked to it in the show notes as well as made it available on the Tools and Resources tab of HoltonWise.com. In that guide, I graded everything. A, B, C, D, F. Very simple, easy to follow along. A, mostly owner-occupants, mostly rich folk, super expensive, Super low risk neighborhoods. F, the exact opposite of that, right? Super cheap, super high risk. Okay, I've graded all the neighborhoods in and around Cleveland. And there's one neighborhood, the Clark Fulton neighborhood, or as I like to call it, the Metro Health neighborhood. I've graded that as a D because I'm open and I'm fair. That is a lower income neighborhood, right? I've made the most money in C and D neighborhoods, right? I think investing in those neighborhoods, getting Section 8, is awesome, right? You get super low prices, super high rents, and the fact that you can get Section 8, well, that alleviates a lot of the risks that come along with low-income investing, okay? Now, there's various C and D grade neighborhoods throughout Cleveland. You can invest in any of them, and I think you'll make money, but there's one in particular, the Clark Fulton neighborhood that I love the most, and that's where this property is. 3778 West 39th Cleveland, 44109. Just hit the market four days ago, priced at 105, all right? Now, I think you're going to have to pay every bit of 105 because in my opinion, this is the best friggin' neighborhood you can invest in, right? All things being equal, I think you can get yourself a $100,000 or so duplex, put Section 8 tenants in there, and make money. But the reason I like the Clark Fulton neighborhood, or as I call it, the Metro Health neighborhood, the reason I like it so much more than the other uh, neighborhoods similar to it as far as uh, neighborhood grade or risk level goes is because something I've talked about on this show many, many times. Metro Health, huge hospital. They are doing a $1 billion investment into that area. They're going to be doing it into their campus and the surrounding neighborhood, okay? Right? Billion dollar investment. In addition, you're right next to the neighborhoods that have already gentrified, right? Ohio City, Tremont, Detroit Shoreway, right? The neighborhoods you hear great things about. The neighborhoods where they were once the ghetto and now you can buy houses, new build houses for like three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars $600,000. You can get new construction houses in these neighborhoods with a 15-year tax abatement. We're doing 
a lot of short-term rentals in those neighborhoods, super high-end stuff, right? That's where people want to be. You're right next to the Q or you're next to the Brown Stadium or the Rock Hall, right? All those great things, right? You're right next to that, okay? So if I'm an investor and I can buy low-income properties in this neighborhood or this neighborhood, well, hell, give me this one that I know there's a billion dollars coming in and they're right next to all the stuff that's already gentrified. You know, odds are if something's going to gentrify and shoot through the moon one day, it's that neighborhood. Well, guess what? A new article, a new plan just came out that makes me fucking love this neighborhood even more, right? The Rapid Transit Initiative. I'm going to put a link to this article in the show notes below. This is a new investment proposal. Another huge project. 40 to 60 million dollar project folks money going into this neighborhood like crazy so if you're going to take on the risk of a lower term investment to make all that cash flow today why not do it in a neighborhood where there is a lot going on on the horizon so check out that article as well as far as the property itself goes it's not high end yet right that's what all uh the good investments making me think it will become one day. But right now, you got to slap Section 8 tenants in there, right? And this one, it's a side-by-side -side unit. I love these much better than the up-downs because part of the stuff you deal with when you're dealing with any tenant, especially low-income tenants, is they fucking fight each other like cats and dogs. So if you get a side-by-side -side as opposed to an up-down, they will not fight each other as much, and that makes your life much easier, right? And it's already been renovated, right? It looks like it's pretty much turnkey, ready to rock, okay? Look at this. Current seller spiffed it all up for us, right? And looks like they, you know, they took their pictures towards the end of their renovation. Will my guys have to touch up a couple things? Maybe. But more or less, we look like we have a fairly turnkey asset uh, to bring to you guys, right? Doesn't look like we're going to need to do a lot before we put tenants in there. As far as the types of tenants we go, again, we want to go Section 8, okay? One of those units happens to be a three-bed, so we're going to get even more rent. We're going to get about 850 out of that, 750 out of the other one, right? So 16 hundo, 19,200 after factoring in your typical fixed and variable expense estimates. I project this thing will make you about 10 Gs a year. If you're lucky enough to pick it up at the 105, you put down 26 and a quarter, bank kicks in 78. That's a long-term cash on cash return of 23%. That's a great estimate. And that is factoring in things operating in this neighborhood right now as a low-income neighborhood. That doesn't even factor in this neighborhood turning, this neighborhood gentrifying, and you having opportunity in the future like you see in Detroit, Shoreway, Ohio City, Tremont, Gordon Square, right? So for all those reasons, I think this one is a freaking can't-miss deal, home run of a deal. Seller's asking 105. You should be willing to bid at least 105 because I almost guarantee there will be multiple offers on this property. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.